Professor Dreamy, I mean Schmohawk. Adrian Seinstein, do you have a question? I've been wondering, Professor, what exactly is space? Well, Adrian, nobody actually knows what space is. On the smaller scales, space may have very different properties than what it appears to have on the scales that we can measure with today's technology. One way we can think about space is as a way of connecting up points. In a two-dimensional bounded space, it's easy to visualize how points might be connected. Now, if we connect the points on the top boundary with the points on the bottom boundary, we create a two-dimensional cylindrical space. We can visualize this as a flat sheet of space rolled up into a cylinder. Of course, instead of connecting the points on the top and bottom, we could have connected the points on the left and right boundaries to create a different cylinder. Now, what do you think would happen if we connected the points on the top and bottom as well as the points on the left and right. Uh, Professor, Professor, uh, Professor. A.V. Geekman, yes. You would obviously have created the spherical two-dimensional manifold in which Mr. Moose Masher is currently trapped, like a big, fat, two-dimensional rat. When I get out of here, you're geek meat, Geekman. Not so fast, boys. Let's see what kind of space would be created. First, we connect the left and right boundary points. Then, we connect the top and bottom boundary points. So we get a donut. Mmm, donuts. Actually, it's called a torus. Mmm, toruses. This isn't the only way we could have visualized connecting up the top and bottom boundaries of the cylinder. We could have stretched the cylinder around, connecting the top and bottom up like a garden hose. But this still would have created a torus. In fact, both toruses are equivalent ways of visualizing the connection of the points. Let's demonstrate this space with our multidimensional configurator. Okay, Hulk. Now throw your test object. I, I mean football. Okay, Professor. What happened? Well, just as in the case of the spherical space, the toroidal space in which you currently exist is unbounded. The only difference is in the way the space is connected to itself. What do you mean, Professor? Maybe it will be easier to understand if we have our projector display your toroidal space a little differently. Just like cylindrical space, toroidal space is two-dimensional and flat. Our projector displayed Hulk space as a torus since that is a good way of visualizing a flat surface with the left and right boundaries connected as well as the top and bottom boundaries connected. However, Although Hulk space is unbounded, it is still quite flat. There are no distortions as we encountered in the surface of a sphere. So all the rules of Euclidean geometry are still valid. Let's look at an instant replay of that last pass. Cylindrical space has no boundaries in the horizontal or vertical directions, so the football is free to continue on its path. That is, until it encounters something. Yeah, something big and dense. <laughs> hey, Professor, how did the football team get in here with me? Hulk is seeing images of himself like in the cylindrical space. Except this time, light rays from Mr. Moose Masher travel around and strike him from the top and bottom, as well as from the left and right. Hulk sees himself in every direction, left, right, above, and below. Toroidal space is finite, but Mr. Moose Smasher sees it as infinite in both the horizontal and vertical directions. Okay, guys, cut the hell now or I'm gonna tell the coach. <laughs> Mr. Geekman, you certainly seem to be enjoying our little demonstration. Yes, Professor, it's a fascinating demonstration, if I do say so. In fact, it's too bad that the multidimensional conformal space projection configurator is incapable of creating three-dimensional space, or I'd have volunteered myself. Well, I'm glad that you mentioned that, A.V. In fact, the configurator can create space of any number of dimensions. And thank you for volunteering. Nope. 
this, we must return Mr. Moose Masher back to our three-dimensional Euclidean classroom. Okay, Mr. Geekman, are you ready? Beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> Mr. Geekman, you are now inhabiting a three-dimensional, finite-bounded, flat, rectangular space. Hey, look at me, I'm Marceau, I'm Marceau. Don't worry, Mr. Geekman, we can give you a little more breathing room. Just like in Hulk's two-dimensional, cylindrical space, we can connect the left and right boundary points in AB's three-dimensional space to eliminate those boundaries. <laughs> We have connected the points on the right boundary to the points on the left boundary, creating the three-dimensional equivalent to the two-dimensional cylindrical space. Now, let's connect the top boundary to the bottom boundary and the front boundary to the back boundary. By connecting all the boundary points on the opposite sides of Mr. Geekman's space, we have created a three-dimensional toroidal space. Unfortunately, we would need four dimensions to properly display this weird torus. I see Mr. Geekman is enjoying his new unbounded space. I'll stand on my head to tell you to use car. <laughs> Perhaps we should try something a bit more stringent. Do you recall the two-dimensional spherically curved space which we sent Hulk into? Well, as it turns out, there is a three-dimensional spherically curved space which our space configurator is capable of generating. This type of unbounded curved space is one of the many topologies of space allowed by Einstein's laws of general relativity. I've never actually tried this before, but oh, what the hey. 